About 12 years ago, I started this business called NyQuest Camp Canada, in which we help people from around the world travel from a variety of countries to work at camps all the way across Canada. All right, hello everyone, uh, my name is Peter, and for those who don't know me, I'm from uh, Czech Republic, and a couple of months ago, uh, I have started making these videos, so interviewing some interesting people who have lived or traveled or studied abroad to share their experience and to show you guys like the opportunities we have today, like the places we can go to around the world and what we can do over there. So we are in Toronto, Canada today. Yep. I have a Jonathan uh, Nyquist sitting next to me. So Jonathan, how are you today? Doing well, doing well, Peter. Good to see you. Thanks awesome. for uh, coming by and making this opportunity. Yeah, thanks for joining me as well. For the start, can you tell us like a few things about yourself? For sure. So um, again, my name is Jonathan. I am um, originally from the U.S. Uh, I've got Canadian citizenship, mm -hmm. U.S. citizenship, um, and uh, I'm passionate about the traveling industry, passionate about camping, organized camping. Uh, about 12 years ago, I started this business called NyQuest Camp Canada in which we help people from around the world travel from a variety of countries to work at camps all the way across Canada. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I've been running it for about 12 years now. It's been awesome, exciting, and um, yeah, just uh, super excited to share it with people who are interested to work with kids and also to travel to a pretty amazing country. So if you can tell us about your background a little bit, because we're going to talk about the camps later. But yeah. I know that you used to go to camps as well. Yeah, was, uh... yeah. I mean, similar, I guess a little bit similar to your story, Peter, in that you travel to work in Canada. Um, we, growing up, I, again, was from the United States, but my grandmother had a cottage just north of Toronto. So every summer we would go to the cottage and affiliated with that cottage was a day camp. Um, that day camp um, pulled from a community of families in the area and I ended up making a lot of friends right from when I was probably four years old, I started going to camp. Um, and uh, when I was about 10 or 11, my, my mom and dad and a few other parents in the area were friends of ours, decided to send us to a residential overnight camp in Ontario. Um, so I had this home base of friends in the United States, and then I had this community in Canada that I was becoming engaged with. So our parents sent us to an overnight camp in Ontario. Um, it was a good camp, uh, we had a good experience, but for some reason, we didn't think that uh, it met all of uh, all the other campers' requirements and what we were looking for. Our parents then tried another camp the following year. We loved it. It seemed to match well. I ended up going there for five summers as a camper, um, seven summers as a staff member. Um, and in between, I was doing a lot of camps in the U.S. as well. I was doing baseball camps, other different types of day camps, tennis camps. Um, so I was, I just loved being a camper. It was just like something I just really, really loved. Um, and then from my camp experience as a counselor at the camp in Ontario, I, I attended for many years. I got so excited about working with kids. I wanted to do it for other organizations and other places around the world. Um, so I ended up after university moving to California and, um, I led, uh, canoe trips down the, um, down <laughs> down the, just south of Hoover Dam near Las yeah. Vegas. My big claim to fame is that I took the Olsen twins on a canoe trip once, <laughs> wow. if you know the Olsen twins. Uh -huh. uh, then Peter, I traveled out to Australia and I worked at an outdoor ed center there called the Outdoor Education Group. Mm -hmm. And I led trips primarily for private school um, teenage teenagers. Yeah. Um, we led trips to the Outback. Was there reason to go going to Australia also that they have the like switch seasons. Yeah, I mean, like, coming from Canada to escape the winter a few <laughs> times is like amazing. Um, and the, where I was based in the U.S. is Michigan. So that's mm. the same kind of weather we were getting in Toronto. Um, so yeah, to flip the season, um, not only to get the weather, but also because the seasonal jobs aren't available in Canada, let's say, during yeah. the winter time as much. So um, yeah, and that was awesome. And then after I finished in Australia working and leading backpacking trips, I, um, I did a master's degree. Um, in business and outdoor education. And, um, and then I moved to Toronto and worked as a uh, assistant program director for a year round camp uh, near Toronto for at risk youth. And, um, and then soon after that, I launched the business. So wow. it's kind of the, the story of my traveling and working. Uh, the other cool thing though is in Australia, when I was traveling, I noticed that I didn't love the idea of 
going from hostel to hostel to hostel. I, I like doing it for a couple of weeks and meeting people in that capacity, but I really wanted to be engaged with the community. And in order to do that, I found by working in the community was awesome. So actually I had this one month trip plan before I was gonna start working as an outdoor educator in Australia. But after the first two weeks, I sort of said, okay, I met all these backpackers from around the world, but I wanna work. I ended up working for two weeks as a bucket boy on a tomato farm in Bundaberg, <laughs> Australia, this small little town. And it was awesome. Oh, really? um, and I loved it. Again, I was like eating lunches with like the local people from Australia. And um, again, I love to travel, but working and traveling at the same time, I just like am a big believer of the educational aspects of that and just how you can really taste the country's culture through that. So what do you, what do you think like the traveling and like moving to different places gave it to you? What do you think well, you, you have learned? Well, there's certainly a lot of things that you can learn in your own community, that's for sure. And I think that by the time I was 21, 22 years old, I kind of had maxed that out. You know, I went to university, which was away from my home. I lived, you know, on, on campus. Um, and there was a lot that I learned academically. But I got to a point where I had um, gained enough of that academic experience that it was time for me to kind of explore the world and open up a bit. Um, and things that I, I learned was um, travel savvy, uh, how to figure things out. Everything's a little different in every country. Um, I, earned a, I learned a lot about um, my own ability to survive mm. on my own. You're planted somewhere, you've got to make it work, you've mm. got to form relationships, you've got to push your boundaries. Mm. So I was definitely out of my comfort zone. Yeah, you basically don't get like comfortable, right? Because new things and new challenges happening like all the time. Oh yeah, so, oh yeah. Mm. I mean, you're constantly trying to navigate that and you're on your own, far away from your support system. So, you know, when even at university, I was a one hour drive to my house. So if I need to do my laundry or I want to escape for a weekend, and I was still spending all my summers at the camp I grew up at, this really like, you know, you're on your own and, and the confidence that you develop through that is very powerful um, and really helped me in my career in feeling like I could move to Canada where I'd never lived in Toronto and set up a business on my own. I wouldn't have been able to do that if I didn't have that experience traveling and working abroad and, mm -hmm. and, and, and doing things on my own. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, and then when you launched your business, what was the idea behind that? Well, so when I was traveling, I was kind of writing business ideas down as I traveled and I had um, a so picture. was that your plan that you want to come back and start something? Not real. well, I, being from the US, um, it's kind of a generalization, but I did think that I had to run the business in the US. So I was actually, when I moved to Toronto, I thought I was just spending a year working at the Outdoor Ed Center while my uh, girlfriend at the time, who eventually my partner who we married, um, we, I was just planning on being here for a year while she was doing her master's degree. Um, but once I moved here and realized there was this demand for people to come to Canada to work and travel abroad and that there were so many great camps that could be serviced in a great way, I started considering whether or not I should be trying to run this business in Canada and not in the US. Um, and after doing a very limited amount of research, it became pretty obvious that there was this demand here mm -hmm. And the fact that I love being in Canada yeah. myself. I mean, I love the U.S., but it, I found a home here, and, and, and so it was a pretty easy decision. So tell, tell us a little bit about the beginnings of your, your company. People did have the idea that going, working abroad at a camp in the United States was something. So we created a program that was similar to that. And people generally have a good, like Canada definitely has a good reputation around the world. as a good, comfortable place to travel to. So from that respect, it wasn't hard to sell the program once people like learned about us mm. but spreading the the word about the program was challenging i mean we had to, it was very grassroots we went overseas we did some job fairs um we emailed people we reached out to camps we had them email their camp list we linked up with some recruiter recruiting partners who helped us spread the word uh, but it took many years yeah i mean mm. again we're just finished our 12th year it really wasn't until just a few years ago mm. where people really started to understand mm. in various countries where we're focusing a lot of our recruitment in that this is an opportunity that they can you know take part in so it took a it took a while longer than i thought yeah <laughs> but now looking back it's like that makes sense yeah <laughs> i guess what was challenging that you had to talk to the camps in canada and tell them about the idea of recruiting international staff yeah, yeah. why it could be beneficial for them well you know i was sort of an international staff. I know I was yeah. like, but it was, it was a mind shift for camps. Again, it probably was only two or three years ago, mm -hmm. Peter, where they really said, 
oh, I get it. I understand the value of having international stuff and this is where we can fit them into our camp. It took a, it took a while for them to get used to that. Um, and a lot of that was through recruiting really excellent people mm. who were like kid focused and really wanted to teach kids. They really were the key to our success is finding those excellent people and then they paved the way to these camps saying, wow, these all people have been awesome. They've brought in this amazing cultural experience to camp. Let's get some more, right? So yeah, awesome. yeah it's been pretty cool. It's been pretty cool to see it grow and develop. I mean, this was my first business endeavor. And I mean, I think they say that 80% of businesses fail in the first five years and very few succeed into year 12. So I feel pretty lucky and fortunate that I found something that has um, taken off, continue to grow and, um, and it's something that I, it's nice to be able to be a part of a business that I love, yeah. right? We are giving this life changing experience for people like yourself who came to Canada for the first time. And that, you know, for you who came to it, we're able to come to our family camp and our grandparent camp and selfishly, I get to stay here in Canada and all these people fly <laughs> over and I get to meet them and learn about them, learn about their cultures and it's really cool for me. I feel very lucky to be a part of this industry. My experience with you guys was just amazing, right? Well, I'm glad you say that because, you know, we work really hard to like mm -hmm. give like the highest quality service we can get. That's like the key to our business. You know, we want to find amazing staff, but we also want to make sure we find the perfect placement for them, make sure they feel supported through the process. So, you know, if people feel nervous about traveling mm -hmm. on their own, or maybe it's their first time or the first time to Canada or first time to North America, you know, using, utilizing the support of an organization, whether it's through us or another organization that offers a similar opportunity, um, is, a, is a great way to kind of like get introduced to camp, you know, or to traveling. So tell us a little bit about the process of when someone is interested in going to Canadian camp, like how does it work with you guys? Yeah, for sure. So, um, I mean, they can contact us directly mm. if they want, um, and then we can run them through the whole program. We have a bunch of videos that you can look at that can like showcase the experience so that you can see, oh, is this for me? Is this not for me? Um, we also have some recruiters around the world who can help out with um, uh, doing more face-to-face -face interviews, meeting people in person. We have them stationed around the world. So you can decide whether or not you want to go through a recruiting company in your home country, or if there is one, or directly through us. Um, and then, yeah, we go through a comprehensive application, collect a few references. Uh, we do an interview on all the participants, um, tell you more about the program, what you're getting yourself into, uh, introduce the staff team here to you. Um, and then we go over your preferences and what you're looking for from camp. And we then work with over 120 camps that use our services in some capacity across Canada. And uh, so we'll work closely with our placement team and our intake team to say, hey, you know, for instance, Peter, He's got these skills, these interests, this is where he wants to be, this is what he, how long he wants to work, and we try to find the perfect match for you. We'll share that camp, a camp with you first, and then if you think it's a good match, after looking at their website and some of their marketing materials, we'll then help organize an interview. Mm -hmm. And then the rest is up to the applicant, uh, while the directors, directors are super friendly, to go through an interview with the camps. Um, and once the job's secured, we'll sort of hold your hand through the whole process of getting work permits, helping you organize your criminal check, mm -hmm. your medical check. Um, when you arrive in Canada, we provide an orientation, get you your bank account, social insurance number. And then we, we have an orientation and then visit you up at camp to make sure you're doing well. So kind of we're really involved throughout the whole, mm -hmm. the whole process. Awesome. A lot of people ask me, oh, did you get a working holiday visa? Yeah. I'm like, nah, just got a work permit. Yeah. I'm like, so what is a work permit? How, do you, how can you get it? Well, there's two options really. So for some people from the Czech Republic, mm -hmm. for instance, they may want to work in a support role their English level is not as strong, um, or maybe they don't have as much experience working with children. So typically we'll ask those staff members to secure a working holiday permit. And I know that's a bit restrictive because you can only get it one time in your life. And there's a certain quota on yes. the numbers of how many, you can, how many they offer each year. So the vast majority of the participants that come through our program will get a temporary work permit. That temporary work permit is employer specific, so it'll be just for the camp you're working at, um, but it will allow you to travel before and after your camp experience. You can switch on to being uh, a visitor in Canada. And we uh, are fortunate enough to have an in-house in immigration specialist team. So we have uh, our own immigration consultant who only processes permits for um, Canadian or staff coming to work at camps in Canada. And the process is fairly straightforward from the participant's end. We collect a whole bunch of information from the participant, a whole bunch of information from the camp. We then get some information off 
the applicant's travel documents. Our immigration consultant and the immigration team processes it all in the government system. There's no need to go to a interview at the Canadian Embassy overseas. Um, the paperwork is all prepared by us and then we send it to the staff members. When they enter in the country, they show this, the, the paperwork to the immigration officer. They may have to answer some basic questions and then the work permit is issued um, right at the border. It's, and, and I guess a nice thing about the temporary work permit, unlike the working holiday permit, is that you can get it multiple times. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, you don't have to use up your working holiday permit. If you decide that you want to work in a camp, what kind of jobs you, can you do? So, um, I mean, the two b biggest differentiating marks is there's the support workers who can work in a role as a, in the kitchen or a maintenance, typically. Mm -hmm. um, maintenance is like helping fix cabins, mowing lawns. You know, it's not a glamorous job, mm -hmm. but um, it's nice you kind of work on your own schedule. And then the, the majority of the participants that come through our program will work in uh, a general counselor role mm -hmm. where they're like, working directly with children all throughout the day, taking them to activities, or they'll work as an activity specialist. So they'll lead, for instance, archery or water skiing or tennis mm -hmm. or high ropes, and they'll spend a good portion of their day running the activity and then the other portion of the day they'll be like a counselor with the kids. All right and since you have experience from camps in Canada and camps in America, what are the differences what do you think? Well I found that through my experience many of the camps in the US are maybe more hard skill focused mm. so the kids might specialize in a certain activity. There might be a little bit more emphasis on competing in events um, that take place. Again it's just my experience attending a good number of camps in the US as a camper and as a staff. Whereas generally the Canadian camps are a little less competitive and are a little bit more social focused mm -hmm. so that um, you know, the people at Canadian camps will be more engaged with helping kids problem solve, developing life skills. I, I think some of the advantages of traveling to Canada is that um, there are a lot more lenient laws regarding how you can travel after you work mm -hmm. at camp and stay here. Um, there are, it's easier to obtain your work permit as we just spoke about. I know there are some restrictions in the work permit in the U.S. on what you can and can't do and your eligibility. But I think that what people generally find here is that, you know, that warm Canadian friendly, like embrace it, it, that is so a, a big part of our culture will come across at the camps in Canada. And people are, will welcome you in, make you feel comfortable. And for a traveler coming far from their home, that's a really nice feeling to have. I can't say that, that you wouldn't get that in the US um, because I'm sure a lot of those camps offer that same type of thing. But that general Canadian friendly culture when you're traveling around and it's, it's just prevalent everywhere you go in this country. And, um, and it's just an awesome thing to kind of be a part of and, and witness firsthand. And I would also say the big difference between uh, camps in the USA and camps in Canada that you can also participate in the spring program and the fall program. For sure. So, um, so typically camp, many camps in Canada will open um, and run programs from the end of April, beginning of May. And they'll run right through until like your camp, mm. uh, middle, end of October, sometimes even into November. There are a few camps that run in the winter as well. Yeah, you can work for multiple seasons or multiple length, longer length of time. And especially if you, you know, come one summer and you fall in love with the camp, and you're like, whoa, I want to work here year round. They offer winter, spring, summer, fall programs. You can then initiate your working holiday permit and work for, you know, a longer period of time. And it's a pretty, again, pretty awesome way to work and travel because your accommodations are provided, your food's provided and you earn, you earn a wage. That's awesome. Uh, is there anything you would like to mention at the end? Or? I think, you know, as in Peter, you took the leap. And, and I feel like in some ways I took the leap mm. to leave our comfort zones mm. at um, a time when it would be, could be very easy. And a lot of our, my friends and family members are saying, why are you going to work with kids in the yeah. middle of the woods somewhere far away? Where's the value in that? Shouldn't you be studying to yeah. take a graduate degree or do something else. I would say that uh, looking back, I'm very fortunate, and I think you are too, in having the chance to travel and work when you're still at an age that you have the time and the capability to do that. Um, at this stage in my life, it would be very difficult for me to take a block of time and leave my family to do something like that. So you know, if you're, th if you're a person who's thinking about doing this, in the near future, I would say, do it. Mm. Yeah, 
make it happen, whether it's on your own through an organization, by your own research, but initiating that process and you'll be surprised of how much you learn, mm -hmm. grow, what you're able to see and the doors that that opens up for you. you know? And then again, it's not for everybody. So if you don't feel like you wanna travel and be abroad, great, no problem, it's not for everybody. But um, I have yet to meet someone who has traveled, worked abroad, who said, well, I really regretted mm -hmm. doing that. It's just, it's true. I, I just have never heard that before. So mm -hmm. I, I think that says a lot about wh how powerful that experience is mm -hmm. and how positive it is for you know the vast majority of, of people yeah i think two years ago i was actually i was told back home why are you going to these like stupid camps again instead yeah. Yeah. of starting and pursuing your career what is it for why and no. so what would you do what was your answer would you say or were you just like okay i'm just doing it anyways or what, what? yeah yeah exactly because yeah. i knew like what it is right what does it mean to yeah. me and what i can get from that yeah. yeah and yeah it was the right decision of course and i'm so happy yeah. that I've done it and it has helped me a lot to get like where I'm now. Yeah. Good for you, yeah. I, I, and I think, I think a lot of people are in that same situation where mm -hmm. they're like pulled back, whether it's from parents, friends, family, you know, university professors, whoever, or just social pressures. Mm -hmm. It's important to really, you know, mm -hmm. have confidence and, and go for it. Um, so, yeah, it's great. Awesome. All right, thanks, Peter. I appreciate it. Thanks for your All time. All right, thanks for, for your time as well. Mm -hmm. Really appreciate it. Okay. All Good right. luck on your travels. Yeah, thank you. Okay, man. we'll see you out there one day. All right. <laughs> Thanks. So, Nick, uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, my name's Nick. I'm <laughs> 28 years old. I come from a small town just outside of Manchester in the UK. Mm -hmm. And I've lived, uh, I've moved to Canada now, so I've lived in Canada just over a year. You already um, mentioned before that you got a working holiday visa and you went to Canada to work for a few months, right? I did, yeah. I took a gap year in between college and going to university. Mm -hmm. uh, not sure what to do. Um, a friend back home, Patrick, had his parents have a place in um, Canmore, just outside of Banff in the Rocky Mountains. And he said, hey, I'm going out. I'm going to work for a few months during the uh -huh. summer. Do you fancy coming? I said, yeah, <laughs> yeah that sounds incredible. So we um, worked in a brewery in the Rocky Mountains for a summer. Should never have come home. Wow. <laughs> that was yeah, one of the best summers of my life. I then started my university degree uh, in primary education. Um, mm -hmm. So to be well, an elementary school teacher. Thinking that down the line I'd be applying for teaching jobs, I knew that I didn't have any experience working with children with physical disabilities. And I thought that would be some really good experience to get. And there were some opportunities at home, but none significant where I could, some day programs I could go to once a week. And uh, remembering the experience I had in Canada and how much I loved it, mm -hmm. I thought, yeah, if there's a way I can get back to Canada, that would be great especially during the summer while I'm at school. Literally just went on Google, started having a look around for, I knew Camp America existed because my brother had done that. So I thought, hey, there's something similar in Canada. And I looked and I found Nyquist on Google and uh, applied to them. I said, right from the off, I want to work with children with disabilities. And they said, hey, we've got a great camp in Ontario to go and do that. <laughs> so I went my first summer, had like an amazing experience. And the re I mean, the reason I went was for my resume, really. Mm -hmm. But and to be honest, with that first summer, I'd tick that box, so I could have just stopped there. But uh, just for how much I loved it, I just kept going back. And so whilst I was at school for four years, I went each summer. So I, the past six summers, mm. I worked at that camp. Uh, I just kept going back to the same one. I was a counsellor my first year, then I was a cabin leader. Uh, then I moved up to head counsellor. I um, tried my hand at being a programme specialist. And then the last summer I was there as the programme director. For the camp so yeah worked worked my way up and um it was during my last summer actually that uh nyquest run family camps i know you've worked at one mm -hmm. yourself and uh last year i went to work at the family camp i just moved to canada <laughs> didn't have, didn't have a job yet and thought hey i can earn a little bit of money over a weekend and do some fun stuff up at camp so i went up there and uh, got to know jonathan a bit more and told him what i was up to i just started a master's in the university of toronto in theology and said, hey, I can work 20 hours a week part-time while I'm in school, I can go full-time in the summer, you know, I'm looking for a job. And he said, hey, you know, we've got a opportunity to be one of the placement directors mm -hmm. uh, for NyQuest. And I thought, well, that's perfect. Wow. A company that's facilitated me to come to Canada each year. I mean, I met, I met my wife at camp. So <laughs> I always say Jonathan's kind of facilitated my whole life. <laughs> uh, so thanks very much. Um, yeah, I thought if I can help people to have the, you know, same amazing experience that I had then, you know, that's great. So what is your role in NyQuest? Uh, I'm one of the placement directors. So we have an intake team, mm. which anyone who applies to the program, they will 
uh, interview them, uh, find out all their skills and interests, what they like to do. And if they accept them onto the program, then they come to the placement team who kind of plays a Tinder role <laughs> where we'll match them to a camp that suits well. It's quite a significant process through all the matchmaking. In fact, even looking into people's personalities uh, through our great knowledge of the camps, knowing if they're going to be a good fit. Uh, yeah, but it's an interesting job. Yeah, I enjoy it. feel like, I think nine times out of ten, the placement that we send over to the participant, they say, that's exactly it, that's what I want to do, send me there. Through our discussions with them, finding out what they like and our knowledge of the camps, we can normally match it quite well. Sometimes there's some preferences we didn't know about, uh, so that's why we like to give the participant the opportunity mm. to have a say. So if, if someone's thinking about participating through NightQuest, when is the best time to apply so i mean we always say the sooner the better mm. we accept we last year we accepted applications right until like the end of may but uh, say you were to uh um and Aaron think about it and then apply in may there's very limited kind of opportunities mm. around i think um if you have a specific idea of what you want to do or if you're open to doing any um any kind of role uh, in anywhere in canada it's nice to have all those options available mm. because these are you know real life jobs canadians want them to there's only a set number of camps mm -hmm. set number of positions in each one so if you apply in september um you know apply before christmas those they're pretty open camps are just hearing back from returning staff finding out who's coming back all those unfilled positions are all there you know sometimes we're able to give you um give you a choice and if there's a few different ones we think match you say hey have a look at these different camps these different roles there tell me which one you'd like me to put you through to first yeah all right thanks for joining me and thanks for your time really appreciate no, no it no problem yeah thanks right. very much i wish you good luck with your work and in your life yeah absolutely you too yeah look forward to following your thanks adventures so much. thanks yeah. so much all right bye bye